Hey Austin, what size of welding lead do you use and how long is it? How long will my welding lead last? What is a whip and what is the purpose of a whip? What are some budget options for welding lead? And what are some splicing methods? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Austin Ross. I've been a welder for 15 years. Here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for welders. If these are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. Today we're going to talk about welding lead and at the end of the video I'm going to attempt to show you the coolest way to splice welding lead that I've ever seen. If you haven't been following along back whenever I pipeline welded I had a welding partner named Andy and he showed me this method of joining welding lead and my mind was literally blown and I'm excited to share it with you. All right kick back pour yourself a cup of coffee we're gonna to try to make this as simple as possible. I got a lot of information to cover in a short amount of time to do it. So I'll start off by sharing with what I use on my welding machine, and then I'll pull up a couple of charts so you can see the proper way to pick out your proper size of welding lead. First of all, how long does welding lead last you? How long will it last you? For one, it depends on what type of welding you're doing and how much of it you're doing, but it also depends on how you take care of your welding lead. The way you store it, whether you park in a garage or not, whether you have lead wells, whether the sun's hitting them a lot, whether you're working on gravel and stepping on your leads, a lot of this is gonna come into play as far as how long it'll last. The welding lead that I have on my truck, which is this right here, I've had for eight or nine years, and it is still good welding lead in my opinion, so at least that long. That's what I can say from experience. I've heard stories of welding lead lasting generations, we'll say. So a good 20, 30, 40, 50 years if it's well taken care of, or by then it might be spliced and frayed and uh, maybe not up to par for some oil field jobs or you know jobs where your stuff's gotta be up to par, but it still welds. So technically it can last a real long time. I've only been welding for 15 years and I've bought several sets of leads over the years for different welding machines, two or three different sets for this, this welding machine, but this is probably the longest I've had a set of leads, uh, close to nine years, so just to give you an idea of time frame. But like I said, it just depends on how well you take care of them and what you're doing a lot of. If you're doing a lot of welding on heavy material and you're doing a lot of it, it may not last near as long. Also, what comes into play is the proper size of welding lead depending on what you're welding on. If you're welding on heavy material with too small of lead and you do that a lot, you're gonna burn up your lead a lot faster, therefore it won't last you as long. So what size of welding lead do I use? I use a one aught. I'll throw up a chart here on the screen so you can see the different sizes of welding lead from smallest to largest. Mine is a one aught, and it is an ultraflex. Ultraflex just means that it's gonna be more flexible, especially during the winter time, whenever your, your lead kind of gets stiff. Ultraflex, true ultraflex, is supposed to be, you know, roll up a lot better during cold weather. Um, this stuff I've had, like I said, for about nine years, so it's actually um, stiffer than like a good, uh, newer uh, ultraflex. But uh, it's a one aught, and what I do, what I've done over the years, is I buy a 250-foot spool, and I cut it in half. 125 foot on my ground and 125 foot on my stinger. That's what I've done over the years just because that's the cheapest way to do it is by buying a full spool. They do make different spools, spool lengths that you can buy. I think they make a 500. They, you might even be able to buy a 200 foot spool, but that's most generally what I, what I use. Little did I know up until doing research for this video right here, one aught is actually a little bit too small for 250 foot of welding lead. So real quick, I wanna go over the proper way to pick out your proper size of welding lead, uh, the diameter versus how long of welding lead that you want or need to have for whatever welding application you're doing. So there's three different things to consider whenever you're picking out welding lead. One is total length of welding circuit. That just essentially means your total amount of welding lead. So in my case, 250 foot is my total circuit. Number two is rated output of whatever welding machine that you have. And then number three is duty cycle of welding machine. So to keep this simple, I'm going to throw up a couple of uh, pictures and charts here. That way you can see how I found out that my one aught lead was slightly too small for the length of welding circuit that I have going on. 
So here's some information about the machine that I have. It's an SAE 300. It's a 300 amp machine with the 60% duty cycle. And then I want 250 foot of lead. So if you go by this chart here and you align these numbers, it actually calls for a two aught. Now, if I would jump down to a 200 foot of welding lead, my one aught would be just fine. So hopefully that helps you. Um, whatever machine you have, look up your specs on it and utilize this chart to try to give you an idea of what size of welding lead you need for your welding machine and what you're going to be welding. So in layman's terms, the longer that your welding lead is that you need, the bigger in diameter that it needs to be. That's a good rule of thumb. You can try to be tight like I have over the years and I just know from experience that that doesn't always work out. It depends on what it is. If you're welding on like barns and stuff, you can get away with like this, uh, I think this is like a number two, so you can see the, the difference here. This is a number two welding lead and you can get away with like a hundred foot of it because you're only making a one or two inch weld here and there and you're only welding with one eighth welding rod. So certain applications you can get away with smaller welding lead but whenever it comes to welding on heavier stuff and you're doing that all day, like uh, equipment repair, uh, heavy wall pipe, um, just anything like really heavy, you know, half inch or three eighths inch plate on up to two inch, you know, bevels. Like if you're doing some hardcore welding all day, then I really recommend getting the proper size of welding lead. That way it lasts you forever. This Ultra Flex nowadays for like a one aught, I believe is around $5 a foot. So do the math. It's really expensive, so you want to get the proper lead for the proper application. All right, real quick, let's talk about a couple of budget options when shopping for welding lead. So number one, I recommend shopping for regular welding lead versus Ultraflex. Ultraflex, like I mentioned earlier, is around $5 a foot right now at the time of this video being published and for, for one aught roughly here in my area. And I don't know what the regular is, but it's cheaper, should be anyway, should be cheaper. If it's not cheaper, definitely go with the Ultraflex because Ultraflex is nice. But anyway, regular versus Ultraflex is a good way to go. Also, shopping for used welding lead. Craigslist, eBay, Facebook Marketplace. This can be a good option for coming across the right size of welding lead for whatever it is that you need, you know, for the proper length that you need. And the obvious, which is, to buy less welding lead or smaller diameter welding lead, but that just means you're limited on your length. But depending on what you need it for, that might be an option for you. All right, next, what is a whip and what's the purpose of a whip? So a whip is just a smaller size of welding lead, 15 to 25 foot is what I usually make my whips. The purpose of it is for comfort. One of the main things with welding is getting comfortable. That's how you make a quality weld. That's how you minimize your mistakes on welding is getting comfortable. And one way to get comfortable is by utilizing a whip. Usually I would use ultra flex, but it looks like I have regular lead on uh, this set of leads. All right, last but not least, let's talk about splicing methods. So this here is a quick connect. This is uh, a good, very practical way to connect welding leads and it allows you to add welding lead in case you get in a situation where you need more welding lead. This allows you to add, which is why I've actually got this set up right now because of working in backyards or, or whatever, you know, the, the type of welding that I'm doing now, like a very general practical mobile welding setup like I've got going on now <clears throat> or residential. That's why I have this set up versus back whenever I was pipelining, I kind of got away from the quick connect for a couple different reasons. One is because I never hardly ever needed to add welding lead. So there was just no reason to have this in my welding lead whenever I was just welding pipe, but also it was for a better connection all the way around. In fact, I worked with some guys that didn't even use a whip because they didn't want any splice whatsoever. They just went straight from the terminals on your weld machine to your stinger. That way there's one solid piece of cable. There's no connection. So there's no, the only areas where you're going to have any lack of connection is where your lead 
hooks up to your stinger and then where your lead hooks up to your welding machine. So therefore it minimizes the potential for lack of connection. Connection is a huge deal when it comes to welding. Clean connection and a good connection is key to a good weld. And whenever you're welding on x-ray pipe, it becomes a even more big a deal versus welding on like a barn or something where it doesn't, you know, as long as it's melted together, it literally is, is just fine and just as strong versus when you're trying to make an x-ray weld on heavy wall pipe and you're making several passes, if you're starting to get a, a, a lack in, in connection anywhere in your welding lead, that could affect your, your weld and therefore be a um, potential for, to make a, a bad weld or bust x-ray or whatever. So all that to say, whenever I was pipelining, it was a real big deal to focus on connection and but like I said, it depends on what you're doing. So aside from the quick connect, that's one way is quick connect. Another way is, uh, well, before I talk about this method, another way is the, uh, what I'm going to call the twist and roll. So I've actually made a video about this method years ago whenever I started my YouTube channel. If you've been following along since the beginning, you've probably already seen it. If you haven't, we'll put a link in the description or in one of these corners here so you can go check out that video. The guy that actually got me my first pipeline test taught me that way of splicing. And almost lastly, besides the really cool way that I'm going to show you here shortly, is this copper sleeve. They make these copper sleeves that you literally just cut back each side of your lead. You poke the side of your lead in here and the other side in here, and then you hammer it down flat or you crimp it just like you would a lug on uh, the end that goes on your weld machine. And then of course, putting heat shrink over that to keep this from arcing on anything. Cause if you don't put heat shrink over this, this will arc on the material if you're not careful. So got a copper sleeve, quick connect, and then the twist and roll. All right, lastly, the coolest way that I've ever seen to join welding lead is to simply weld them together. It's simple. All right, so what I've done here is I've cut my quick connect out. And instead of using the quick connect, I'm gonna weld these two together here. As you can see here, I've got my ground and my stinger connected, but my, my whip is not connected to my welding lead. So I've trimmed back just a little bit of the uh, insulation on each end. And then I'm, I'm gonna take my knife and kinda rough these ends up a little bit. That way they have a chance to weld to one another. And I've got my machine turned all the way up on both knobs. And I've got it on high idle. All right, so the idea is to push these two together. They're gonna weld each other together, they're supposed to. And then I'm gonna pull my stinger off my ground. This might take a couple tries. It helps if you have somebody else to disconnect that once this is done, but we'll see how it goes. Dag nabbit. Dag nabbit. Take two.
Ta-da. All right. Took me three tries, but there you have it. Welded together. I was a little skeptical myself whenever Andy uh, showed us this, me and our helpers and whatnot. Um, but we welded, I think that was a 16 inch line, we welded at least, I don't know, a month or so after. What we were doing was welding off a sled and we were getting our leads and everything set up for that sled. And uh, we welded a good, I don't know, three or four weeks with our both of our leads like this. So pretty daggum neat, had to show you guys. It took me uh, three, I think three or four tries. And I think it has something to do with the, the proper amount of fray because whenever you cut this lead with these loppers right here, it, it makes them all bunch up together, but for it to properly weld together, it's kind of like soldering, I guess you could say. But for it to properly join, they gotta, it's gotta be kind of frayed. That way there's, there's a good, and it's gotta be the, just the right amount of stuff that all joins together so anyway there you have it i freaking love it that is the neatest thing in the whole wide world There you have it, there's my two cents on welding lead. I hope it was helpful. If it was, check out my website, aroswelding.com for more helpful information, as well as the shop where we carry some tools, some tools list, etc. Thanks for being here, and remember, learn something every day.